How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and in this video I'm going to show you how I made this, a 3D printed sculpture using the iOS scanning app Turnio. You ready? Let's dive right in. The sculpture in this video is titled Man Carving His Own Destiny, and was originally sculpted by the Czechoslovakian-born American sculptor Albin Polasek. I first saw this sculpture at the Albin Polasek Museum in Winter Park outside Orlando, Florida. I saw that the sculptor had made many versions of the sculpture throughout his life, continuously refining and iterating on his original idea. As an allegorical sculpture, Man Carving His Own Destiny really resonated with me, and I grew to admire the effort and commitment of the original sculptor. I was visiting the museum with my mom, who has had a lifelong appreciation for art and sculpture, when she asked if it would be possible to scan and print one of these sculptures. She really liked a version titled Evolution, so that's the version that we're going to use in this video. To scan the sculpture, I use an app called Turnio, which works by taking many photographs of an object and then stitching them together to make a 3D mesh. For an object like this, a cat I scanned in my backyard, typically you'll try and get a high, mid, and low angle to stitch all the detail together. Once the mesh has been rendered, we're able to visualize it in 3D to make sure that we have a relatively accurate approximation of the original model. Here's the scan in the Turnio app. I took this scan originally in 2017, so you'll notice some of the textures aren't as sharp as scans done today. After exporting the mesh from Turnio, we're going to import it into Mesh Mixer, where we can visualize the texture very clearly on this model. You'll notice a high amount of detail in all the areas that I was able to photograph. However, on some of the higher parts of the model, where I wasn't able to reach, the texture has sort of filled in on itself and captured a best approximation. There's a little bit of detail missing here, but we're going to handle that later in the mesh stage. For right now, this texture is very sharp and gives a fairly good representation of the original model. You'll notice it's also hollow, because I wasn't able to capture the full base of the model. Before 3D printing this model, we'll need to address that, as well as any other bits of detail that were picked up by the scanner. In Mesh Mixer, we'll remove the texture layer and take a look at the mesh layer and notice a lot of that detail that was captured was kept as a texture. The overall reduction in detail means we have an object that's easier for the 3D printer to process, but contains a little bit less information. Using the Mesh Mixer Plane Cut tool, we'll trim away some of the bottom of the model, giving us a flat base for printing as well as a watertight 3D mesh. From here, the last step in the digital process is to prepare the file for 3D printing. Using the 3D printer slicing software, I'm able to visualize the full toolpath of the model and check for any potential problem spots before sending the file to the 3D printer. After 3D printing, I applied a textured spray paint to give the sculpture a stone-like appearance, and I think it came out really good. The textured spray paint has a very uniform appearance to it, and I'm really happy with how it came out. Just like the original sculptor, I find myself returning to man carving his own destiny to make new versions of it again and again. I'd like to thank the Albin Polasek Museum for keeping these sculptures out on display so everybody can see them. If you're interested in learning more about the museum or visiting it yourself, you can find a link in the description below. I'd also like to thank my mom for introducing me to this sculpture that has had a measurable impact on me. As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.